This is Biology 223. Um, uh, I'm using the third international edition, so it's ch chapter 12. It's Mendelian genetics. This is problem 37. The answer is in the book, and I'm doing separately on a different method, problem 40, whose answer is also in the book, and you will see previous exams with problems related to this. Um, I am not... Uh, the book The book treats it fine, but I found that... Um, it's sometimes difficult for students to, to find an efficient problem-solving technique, and there's some traps. So I'm going to show you a different way to think about it, or I'm just going to explain how I, um, I think it's the easier way to explain. So let me read the problem. We have A plus B plus C plus and D plus are independently assorting Mendelian genes controlling the production of a black pigment. So this is a very standard sort of thing. Recall Beetle and Tatum's work in Chapter 4, we have all sorts of biochemical, biosynthetic pathways in, in, in living organisms by which a series of enzymes creates a, a, a pigment or, um, or, a, or a, um, a, a molecule or a metabolic intermediate um, amino acid synthesis. That work was revolutionary at the time. So we have many of these pathways. It's a very simple linear pathway. We have uh, the, the other problems later on have more complex ones, and we can have epistasis. We also have, if you recall, for these kind of biosynthetic pathways, we typically observe that that we 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 get with the heterozygote sufficient gene products efficient enzyme that um, the difference between the heterozygote and the homozygous wild type is not visible, right? We have clear, distinct, uh, uh, dominant recessive. We don't have so much, we don't see very often codominance or, or partial dominance. Uh, we do see epistasis, of which um, the later problems have. And that means that we see the flowers are red and white rather than red, white, or pink. So that makes this um, quite straightforward. The um, let me read continue reading this. The alternate alleles that give ob abnormal functioning to of these genes are A, B, C, and D. Uh, null. I will designate them as null. So we have we have it each. Uh, we also can have we can have wild type or we can have null. A black individual of a genotype A plus over A plus, so on and so forth, right? So a black individual who's true breeding black, right? Wild type, homozygous wild type at each of the four loci, independently assorting loci, is crossed with a colors individual of, of A null over B null of a true breeding homozygous recessive. So we have a true breeding, so an individual that is wild type homozygous at each locus crossed with an individual that is true breeding homozygous recessive at each locus to yield uh, F1. And the F1 then, uh, F1 will be then every individual will be heterozygous and we expect that individual then has sufficient A, B, C, and D that an individual will be black. Okay, and it says, so a black individual, blah, 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 uh, is crossed to produce black F1. F1 crossed with F1, uh, F1, F1 crosses are then done. Assume that A, B, C, and D act in the pathway as follows on this uh, pathway here. What proportion are colorless? What proportion of F2 are colorless? What proportion of brown? And what proportion of black? So let's, let's do all of them. It only asks for two. So what we... Wonder then is when we cross F1, um, we're going to then, at every locus, independently, we're going to have that one parent can produce two different kinds of gamete, the wild type all in all, the dominant or recessive. And so we have Punnett square. The Punnett square is an extremely valuable tool. Do not feel like it's something you should skip. Uh, it saves you from making mistakes. So using this, uh, you're much less likely by drawing these Punnett squares to to make mistakes. So we see that we have one quarter homozygous wild type, two quarters are heterozygous, and one quarter 
is homozygous recessive, and we expect that the 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 heterozygous individuals show the show the wild type phenotype. So three quarters then are phenotypically plus, and one quarter is phenotypically null. Okay, so how do we think about this? We have not just one locus, we have four loci, and they're in a, they're in a line. And you can imagine the branches and, and, and uh, other sorts of, uh, well, I think just branches would come up in epistasis and all sorts of other things. So how do we think of this? Let's think of it in series. So at from, from the colorless compound, first colorless compound to the second at A, I'll do it right below hand. Let's imagine three quarters go on and one quarter stops. That's at A. So that's going to be three quarter proceed past and one quarter halt. And at B, likewise, three quarter go on, three quarter are functional, one quarter not. And at C, it's the same. And at B, uh, D, we also have this. So, that's uh, one quarter. So, what does that mean? It means in order to be black, it has to have A, B, C, D. So, it's going to be three quarters that make it past A, that have A, and th another three quarters. So, three quarters make it from the first white to the second white via A, and, an and of those three quarters, of those that made it past A, Three-quarters of those make it past D. Three-quarters of those make it past 3. Three-quarters of those make it past D. So that means that to be, uh, let, me, let me do black. To be black requires three-quarters at four different loci to a three-quarter to the power of four. To be brown, we need to have it be functional A, functional B, functional C, and non-functional D. Okay, so three quarters times three quarters times three quarters times three quarters. Uh, let me get my... So three quarters... A little bit tricky here. I can't see the pen while I'm working. Three quarters... to the power of three, that's A, B, C, times one quarter at D. So that proportion will be brown. And what is that? Four, uh, 16, that's a one, one, 256. So that's going to be 81, 256. That's going to be uh, uh, 27, 256. And then white is a little bit trickier. So white is trickier. In fact, I'm going to need a little more room to do white. So let me put it over here. We have, and for white, what we need is, well, it's going to be one quarter that are stopped. So the, the book has the answer of, well, to be clever, to calculate white, start with one and subtract the proportion of brown and black. That, that's, that's true, that's good, it's good to know that trick, but let's go through it the long way because sometimes uh, we need to understand this aspect as well. So one quarter will be stopped at A, so that's one quarter, plus three quarters will continue past A, but stop at B. They're also white. So it's going to be one quarter plus three quarters times one quarter, plus the three quarters that make it through A and B, but are stopped at C, right? They're stopped at C, they're still white, plus, so that's going to be three quarters uh, squared times one quarter. Okay, so, uh, two ways to solve that could be you think of the white as unity minus black and brown proportions, or you can do it this way. I recommend you think, be able to think this way, right? One quarter, let me do it he up here. I'm going to do it in a different color. Uh, so let's do it up here. So one quarter are stopped here, and three quarters go on. One quarter, oh, I did it already down here. Let me do it down here, I'm sorry. Three quarters proceed. So one quarter stopped. So that's this one quarter, right? And then three quarters go on and one quarter stop. So that's these 
that's these. And then also we have three quarters go on, three quarters go on, and one quarter is stopped. That's, that's these. Uh, so that way of thinking uh, applies to all the problems you can see in this. Okay, I'm going to stop here.